You know, my first teaching job in China, I was covering for maternity leave. And I had only been at the school for about one month before the end of the school year. And on my last day, I'm walking out and this little girl in my class, she breaks down in tears. Okay, and I'm I'm like, I, I just was astonished because I'm like, she only knew me for one month. So I go to ask her, I said, little girl, what's wrong? Uh, why are you crying? And she says to me, she says, you know, I remember the first time I saw someone black. And she says that my whole life, my mom and dad has been telling me to stay away from black people and that they're bad. And she said to me, she goes, but ever since I met you, I know that my parents know nothing. There's an expression that the student is not above the teacher and the teacher is not above the student. This interchange and exchange between two people so dissimilar actually have more in common. Because what she has also done was say to you, you know, Lao Shi, I understand that you deserve to be here and I understand that you deserve respect. And I understand this whole notion of unapologetically black in China. Give us your uh, introduction, Dr. Dawson. Tell me one, two, three. Three, two, one. Greetings, my name is Dr. Sherol Dawson. I am the original OG overseas game changer and the executive producer, Coloring Outside the Line. This work is extremely important because it shows the optics of living abroad from the perspective of black and brown individuals. This is truly the epitome of black excellence on foreign soil. I invite you to come on in, sit down, and listen and learn to others who have made the sojourn across foreign waters and to hear how they have been able to master the difficulties and the nuances of living in a foreign land. But I'm really from uh, P Street, it's what we call it, from President Street in uh, Brooklyn. That's in Crown Heights. I, I, most of my family that I, my uh, closest family, I guess, lives there. I don't want to say that term, closest. Sorry, family, but that's where I grew up. My grandmother lives on President Street, so okay, I would say that's where I'm from. Here. And you know, I find it interesting. Here we are, we're both from Brooklyn. We end up in China. And I didn't meet you until I came to China. You were basically in my neighborhood. Right. And the book project, I needed a photographer, and somebody referred me to you. 
and the rest is really history. And I just right. think it's so wonderful that to connect with another OG, people think OG are gangsta. I'm not talking about gangsta. Do you see yourself different from anyone? Or deep down intrinsically, you know that we're all the same? Or do you feel that you're special? Is there something about you that's different? Well, I think uh, we are diverse. As a human in a different place, we find a, a certain uh, different type of skin color, something like that. I, yeah, I think, I think I'm different. You think you're different? Yes. So one of the beauties, when you understand that you're a game changer, that purpose there is, is an idea that game changers are chosen. And I want to spend a few moments on this idea of being chosen. Do you feel that you have been chosen for a purpose in this lifetime? And if so, what do you think that purpose is? Oh, before I came to China, when I was graduating from university, um, I was on the brink of being homeless. And yeah, so. Can you speak a little bit about and homeless? Because, share, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, yes. So um, I had a free tuition uh, going to university, but uh, my mom fell ill in my last year, so she couldn't support me. And I lost my job. So it was very hard to kind of handle everything. But I, the, the last moment when I was going to graduate, two months in, before graduating, I, was, I had to sleep on friends' couches. I had to like, make it happen. And this taught me something about my own resilience and my own power as a human being, that whatever challenges I face, I always have the end goal. I always look at what am I striving for um, rather than what's happening right now. And that taught my mom something that she can trust that I will survive in this world and she can trust in her own foundations that she's put on me. But she can trust that I'm a human that has learned by herself. Let me just say, I am extremely grateful uh, to my mother because she had the foresight to make sure that her children, my brother and sister and I, was exposed to the finest education that money can buy. Great Neck is a heavily resourced community, largely Jewish community, and I was one of the only handful of black children that attended that school. Uh, because of my exposure, Early on, I knew that I was different. My mother made tremendous sacrifice, even took a job that she was overqualified for to make sure that her children would receive the best. So, in a nutshell, I am used to being the best and having the best.